Mmm, look at that. Oh, that's some baked tilapia with a bread topping on it and some asparagus. Now, if you want to learn how to make this baked tilapia, watch this film. I'm not going to tell you anything about how to fix that asparagus. That's a whole different show, okay? But the baked tilapia, this is simple, it's quick, it's easy, and it's going to blow your mind just how good tilapia can come out, okay? Watch this video. Hey, you're going to get something really special. Hello, welcome back to Texas Cooking. Today we're going to do a very simple fish dish. This is sort of a good beginning fish dish, or if you've never cooked fish much, this is a great way to start. This is tilapia, and we are going to do a baked tilapia today, and we're going to season it with a few items. I have Parmesan cheese, breadcrumbs, some paprika, salt, and mayonnaise, and this is a Sounds kind of unusual for fish, but believe me, this tastes better than you can even begin to imagine. So, I have a winning dish for you here. It's going to blow the socks off of your friends and family. Watch this video, and you're going to be blown away by what you get. Hello, welcome back. Hey, we're doing our tilapia now. Now, to start on tilapia, to do a wonderful baked tilapia, we need a good topping so the fish doesn't dry out. I tell you what, how about I move this fish out of the way, this beautiful tilapia that we have here, and a baking pan that I have, and we're just going to set them aside for just one moment while we prepare the topping. Now, our topping is going to be very simple. I have here one quarter of a cup of grated Parmesan. Now, this is the cheap stuff that you see in the uh, containers in the supermarket, the shaker bottles in the supermarket, and this is absolutely perfect. This is what you want for this dish, okay? You don't want to go buy fresh. Now, right here I have some uh, breadcrumbs. Spill a little bit, don't worry about that. Hey, these breadcrumbs you can buy uh, commercial in jars or, or uh, some containers, and, or you can just make it fresh at home from old bread and grate it up in your grater or put it in a food processor. Now, I have here also one quarter of a teaspoon of salt and a half a teaspoon of paprika. Now, what we want to do is we want to combine all of our dry ingredients. So let's just go ahead and start tossing things in this bowl. Let's put our salt right down in here, our paprika, let's put that down in there, there we go, get these out of our way. Now, I'm going to start with a simple whisk, just like you use for liquids, look how quickly that mixed that, isn't that nice, very simple and easy. This is a wonderful fish topping, and once you've tried it, you're going to want to experiment with all kinds of different fish with this simple topping. It is absolutely stunning. Now, I mentioned also we have mayonnaise here. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to take our mayonnaise and we're going to spread that just like we would spread it on bread, but we're going to spread it on the fish. And then we're going to put that crumb topping right over the top of it. And I'm going to bake that fish at 425 degrees. Now, here we have our fish. And let's get a pan to bake on. Now, what have I done on this pan? I've put down some parchment here. I have actually four layers of cooking parchment on this. Cooking parchment is just like any other paper, except it's a little bit slicker on one side than the other. And it works wonderful, okay? Get yourself some cooking parchment. It will make your pan cleanups much easier, as well as lifting the food off of the surface a lot easier. This is the best non stick cooking surface that you will ever get and it makes well it makes cleanup and everything else just a whole lot easier now before we go handling this fish what we're going to do I'm going to put on some gloves here I recommend that you use gloves for cooking like this it uh, saves some time with cleanup you don't have to worry about spreading whatever's on this fish to other surfaces in the kitchen because you can just take these right back off once that you've transferred your food. So let's put our fish fillets right here on the parchment, directly on it. You don't have to put oil or any kind of non-stick coating on that parchment to start with. There we have two beautiful tilapia fillets. Take your gloves, 
simply take them right back off if you like using gloves or you can use a spatula to transfer however you prefer. Now, time for us to go ahead and coat this fish. I'm going to use a simple knife and we're going to spread this on just like I said, just like if I were dealing with fixing up some ham sandwiches with mayo. I want to spread this the same way right on it. And you don't have to be pretty about this. It's going to be covered up with a whole bunch of breadcrumbs, right? <laughs> Just make sure you get all of the fish covered with it. Now if you notice how I spin that dish around, the, the tray around, I like to do that to make it easier to get to things. There we are. Now I believe I've got too much on this one. Look at all that. That's okay. I'll remove some of the excess. I said you want this to be a good coating, but it doesn't have to be ridiculous. It doesn't have to be pretty either. This one's a little prettier, this one's a little uglier. Guess what? The fish will get over it. Now, <clears throat> now that we have our uh, mayonnaise spread out on the fish. Let's go ahead and take this beautiful crumb topping and just pour it right down over the top. Again, you don't have to be pretty about this. If some goes over the sides, that's fine. Hey, it's just bread crumbs and a little parmesan, right? It's not like you're losing the world. So, And I want to get this to where I don't see any of that mayonnaise. I want the mayonnaise to be completely covered and I also want those thinner parts of the fish to be a little more heavily coated. Okay, right in there. And why do I want to do that? Well, let's face it. We all know when we're cooking something, the thinner spots get cooked first. The thicker spots get cooked a little bit later. And frankly, if you have uneven items like this, who wants to have overcooked fish or undercooked fish? Nobody. So what we do is we put this nice topping on it and that helps to preserve some of the juices, the moisture in that fish. It also provides a wonderful flavor. Now, that's all we have to do. I'm going to put this in an oven at 425 degrees. After about 12 minutes, we're going to pull it out and take a look at it. 12 minutes is all it takes to cook a simple piece of fish. Remember, it's thin, light meat. It likes to release moisture quickly, and it will quickly dry out on you because of that. So do not overcook your fish. Also, when you overcook it, it becomes too flaky, and it just simply falls apart. So you want it flaky, but not falling apart. Keep it short on the cooking. Hello. Well, we're back again and we're ready to spoon up our fish. Now, I wanted to talk first though about spatulas. You hear the term spatula. Let me show you a spatula. This is a spatula, okay? This is a turner. This is a turner. But this is a spatula, okay? This is a common misnomer in cooking. Spatula means something that you slide under food to turn it. Well, in a manner of speaking, they're correct. But remember, these are not the same tools, okay? So remember, spatula, turner. There you have it. Now, our fish is ready to be served up. I want to go ahead and uh, transfer this fish over here. Pull this out there. There we go. Now remember to handle this with a towel or something that can handle heat, okay? When you're cooking this fish, and uh, so you'll know, I cook this at 425 for 12 minutes. Look at the difference on this. You'll notice that some of the breadcrumbs have turned much darker. That's because the breadcrumbs themselves are darkening, but also paprika has a tendency to darken dramatically when it's brought into uh, contact with heat. So just remember that also. The paprika also adds a little better color into the fish, but the flavor of it is dramatic. It's wonderful. It warms the fish up and it gives us some liveliness. Now let's go ahead and transfer the fish to a plate. This is where it kind of gets tricky for you. 
There we have our plate, our turner. Now let's hope I do this right, okay? If you notice, I have a knife on the side here. If you would like to grab the paper, that is okay. Watch out for the pan. It might be hot. I'm going to slide my turner right up underneath this. And I'm lifting gently. There we go. Oh, there it is. Pull back. And there's our fish. Now, why the knife? Something to pull the fish off of your turner. Okay? Now, if you'll notice, when I pulled that fish up, I pushed some of the paper down. That's because I was pushing too hard on the bottom. Okay? The next one, let's do that again. Let's slip the turner underneath the fish just slightly. I broke part of the fish. Oh, dear. Well, that does it. I'm in trouble now. And if you want to slide the turner up under that fish a little more, you can do this. Or you can just lift it onto its next plate and slide it off. Look how smooth it came off of the parchment here. Okay? So that's the difference between lifting and pushing under it like you're trying to scrape it off of a pan. Now, be careful when you're trying to lift your fish. If you notice, these fillets had a bit of a break in them this way, vertically. But they did not have this break. If you were in a restaurant and you're in a nice restaurant and somebody brought you a fish that was broken like that, you would wonder if they were tasting off of the edge of it or something. So be very careful when you're lifting fish. It's a very delicate item. Okay? Now, all I have to do is just put some vegetables with this and we are ready for dinner. Look at that. Gorgeous, gorgeous filet of fish. That's a beautiful tilapia.